the Byte Plus miniature PC from Azul, a full-blown Windows 10 computer that fits into the palm of your hands. The question here though, can it run Plex? <laughs> The Byte Plus miniature PC from Azul runs an Intel Cherry Trail T3ZA300 quad-core 1.4 GHz processor that can boost up to 1.84 GHz. It comes with options of either 2 or 4 GB of DDR3 RAM, comes with 32 GB of storage, 2 USB 3.0 ports, 1 USB 2.0 port, a VGA port, and an HDMI port. It supports microphones, USB keyboards, wireless mice, has built-in Wi-Fi, both 2.4 and 5G bands, and it has Bluetooth 4.0. And right when you boot it up, it comes stock with Windows 10, already pre-installed. So the Byte Plus miniature PC is kind of built for a niche market. Maybe it's built for on-the-go businessmen who need a computer that they can plug into any monitor or projector on the go. Or in this case, somebody like me who might be looking for an all-in-one HTPC solution that they can plug in underneath their TV and use it just like a regular set-top box. And in fact, when I kind of browsed YouTube reviews, I found, even though I didn't watch every single one of them, that not a lot of people touched on the Plex ability of this device. They're more toting some of the basic key elements of it where you can pull up word processor or browse the internet. But what I want to see is how it performs with Plex, just the same as I did with its little brother, the Azul PC Stick. I'll link that up in the corner. And the reason why, because this could be a great all-in-one HTPC that basically gives you all the full functionality of the Plex Media Player software without having to buy a specialized device like a Fire TV or a Fire Stick. And at the price point it has, it is kind of competitive to things like maybe an Nvidia Shield. Although I can say at this point, it is definitely not as comparable as the NVIDIA Shield is because from my previous testing, which you can see in previous videos, I actually did test the NVIDIA Shield as a media server. And I can tell you right now that the Byte PC is at a level that I'm not even gonna test it as a server. That's primarily because the NVIDIA Shield actually has built-in hardware accelerated transcoding, whereas this is just an HTPC. Okay, so if you watched my previous review on the Azul Stick, I did notate that the Wi-Fi performance was kind of bad when I was trying to play a video. So when I got this device, that was kind of the first thing that I wanted to focus on. I powered it on, connected it to my Wi-Fi network on a 5G band, and I tested it out. And with my testing, I was using a couple movies. Both of these movies I have verified to work. I've watched them quite a few times. First one being Shrek, running about seven or eight megabits per second. And the other one is Back to the Future, a movie file that I kind of over-encoded a little bit and made it 17 or 18 megabits per second. Doesn't really need to be that big, but it's Back to the Future, so it is what it is. Plus, it makes for a great testing file. Now keep in mind here is I'm not testing the transcoding of my server. I know that Zeus can handle anything I can throw at it. Instead, I am playing everything as a direct stream to the Byte Plus PC. So starting off with Shrek, I got everything hooked up, played it, and I was a little let down at first. It started just the same as the PC stick did, where it was a little choppy at first. It did level out and it was actually usable. But then I let the movie run for about 30 to 35 minutes. And when I went back to see how it was holding up, I noticed that the words and the video was off sync. Wake up. Huh? What? Wake up. <clears throat> Morning. Um... Now to be as thorough as possible, I did go ahead and plug in an ethernet cable into the Byte Plus just to see if maybe the Wi-Fi was causing the hiccups here. And sure enough, I played the Shrek file and it played just fine for almost over an hour. So here I am back to square one with the Azul PC stick that I tested out before. Now I actually read a couple comments on the Azul PC stick where some people recommended some settings on the, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter that was built into the stick. And while some of the features that they mentioned were not in this one, I did find one that was a uh, throughput booster. From the brief research I did on Intel throughput booster, it seems like it's kind of a hit and miss feature. And a lot of times most people 
won't need it and or won't even notice a difference if they enable it. But I decided, what the hey, let's go ahead and try it out. So I changed that setting, restarted Plex, and started to play a movie. And then it just worked. I mean, a little sloppy in the beginning, but after that, leveled out and it was a great experience. So again, I don't actually know if the throughput booster does anything, or maybe it's just complete by chance that the video started working properly, but it started working. And I did the same test for 30 minutes, worked fine. Went back and checked it an hour later, worked fine. So at this point, the conclusion on it being a viable Plex solution with a Wi-Fi connection, that really kind of depends. If you go in and you make the changes to your Wi-Fi adapter, you're probably gonna have a smooth experience. So I have multiple devices in my home using the same 5G frequency, able to play full loaded uh, movie files without any hiccups or issues. However, the Byte PC, required a little bit of configuration to get to work properly. Still, overall, after that was done, it did work great. It was a good experience. It was smooth browsing through the movies. I was able to load up and view details very easily. I get the great HTPC uh, experience that you would expect from something like this. Surround sound worked perfectly. It's low power. The remote, again, is an awesome remote. I love that little remote. It's freaking amazing. And overall, it was just a good experience with the one caveat is you having to change that little setting. So if I had to boil this down to one simple question, is the Byte Plus PC worth it as a standalone HTPC? And I can honestly say yes, it might be worth it to, you know, some people, but just keep in mind that this is going to be pretty much a dedicated HTPC. I went ahead and ran this through Cinebench R15, and I think I got a whopping score of like 83. So it's not gonna win any awards. You're not gonna be encoding anything. You're probably not gonna be playing any games on it. You could probably bring up Microsoft Word. Maybe you could browse the internet, some basic things like that. But in the end, this is gonna be a dedicated box meant specifically for things like Netflix, Plex, Hulu, or et cetera. And no, I did not test Netflix or Hulu or anything like that because I don't have subscriptions to those services. But I think that if it can handle Plex, it could probably handle one of the others. And also some of the reviews that I've seen online, they actually did mention Kodi and give a brief example of how well it was able to use that. So if you're gonna get this device, just make sure to go into your wireless adapter settings into the advanced tab, go down to the throughput booster and enable it. Maybe this is snake oil. Maybe it's just coincidence. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not an expert on this feature. However, I can not say that it worked when I enabled it. It stopped working when I disabled it and it worked again when I enabled it. So and that's really all I have to go off of, right? So now that I've confirmed that the Byte Plus PC is capable of playing Plex with a little bit of a modification to it, I'm now going to go back and retest the Azul PC stick to see if maybe that setting would make the difference needed in order to smoothly play back Plex videos. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below, and have a great day.